Well, good to be with you today. We are in week eight of a collection of talks called Mindsets. My name is Todd. I serve as the pastor here at Rev A Church. I'm so excited to share this message with you today. As we continue, let's jump right in. of talks called Mindsets, and uh, here's the question that, that I, I know some of you are, are wanting to ask. Todd, wh- why, why are we talking about mindsets in church? I mean, like, wh- what does neuroplasticity have to do with the Bible? I mean, come on, what, two months on mindsets? And here's why. Because many of us think that to enjoy life, to really be fulfilled in life, that we have to add things to our life. You know, like for me to really enjoy life, for me to have a fulfilled life, uh, I need to add more money, you know, or I need to add new experiences or new opportunities or a new relationship or a new job to my life. And, And the reality is, the truth is, is that we can actually transform our life. We can change our life. We can better our life by simply changing the way we think. And this past week, my, my son came home and uh, he said, Dad, uh, I, wanna, I wanted to get a new bike. And I said, okay, well, show me the bike. And he pulled the bike up on, online and, and he showed me the bike. And the bike is like, it's an e-bike and it's like $2,000. A- 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 am I the only one that thinks like bikes have gone up in the last like 10 years? Is that just me? I don't know what's going on. Like, like bikes are thousands of dollars. And I had this flashback to my own childhood and I had this temptation to do what no parent should ever do is say son when I was your age I mean my my Haro BMX bike you know cost $250 (laughs) like like we should never do that right like you should never say you know when I was your age son this is what I did and and so I, I told him what I'm telling you I said son you don't need to add anything to your life to really you know, uh, change your life. You don't need a new e-bike. And it didn't go well. It didn't go well. So we're saving, we're saving for his, his bike. Okay, so pray for me. But let, let me read you the verse uh, for this series. And, and I hope you at some point can memorize this verse. I hope you can just write it down, maybe in a journal somewhere, put it in your car, put it on your mirror. This is a beautiful, wonderful verse. Romans 12, 2, it says this. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, Dr. Caroline Leaf, who is a neuroscientist, she says that we have more power in our brains than all of the cell phones in the entire world put together. Now, <laughs> my brain does not go to that level, but, 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 but the Bible actually says, as a follower of Jesus, you have the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, living within you. So all that to say, no matter how you slice it, we have the power to transform our lives by changing the way we think. I love this verse because I don't have to conform to the pattern of fear. I don't have to conform to a pattern of sin. I can be transformed. I can change my life through renewing my mind through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, one of the, one of the coolest applications of this whole series is this idea of capturing thoughts. That you can capture your thoughts. You can kind of stand outside of yourself and, and capture certain thoughts. And, and, and do what this verse is saying. You can capture those thoughts and, and you can identify the lies that you tend to sometimes believe as truth. And you can identify the lies and capture those and make those thoughts actually obedient to Christ. And by doing so, you can live out Philippians Four, eight, that, that the writer says, listen, I want you to think about things that are true, that are pure, that are excellent, that are praiseworthy. Think about such things. We can capture those thoughts and identify those lives and, and make those thoughts obedient to Christ. And while we are doing that, we're actually applying Romans 12 too. We're, we're renewing our minds. We're transforming our lives 
by renewing our minds. So in the last few weeks, we've been talking about a group of people in the Old Testament called the Israelites. And just like us, God wanted the Israelites to enter into his promise for their lives. Did you know that about your God? God wants you to enter into all the promises, all of the future, all that he has for you. But just like the Israelites, sometimes we have, a, we have challenges with this. And the Israelites' greatest battles were not outside of them. The greatest battles the Israelites faced were not in front of them. The greatest battles the Israelites faced stood within them. And today we're going to look at one of the first kings of the Israelites. And and his name is David. Now, if you're not familiar with David, David lived about a thousand years before Jesus. Uh, David became the, uh, the Israelite Uh, king, the leader of uh, a prosperous nation, and under David's leadership over 40 years, that, you know, that country, uh, that group of people became a global superpower. And David, as we're going to see in just a moment, David had an unfair advantage in life. Uh, He had an unfair advantage, and, and he had a particular mindset and, 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 and he ultimately became king, but he didn't start that way. David, King David actually started as a shepherd. And we pick up his story in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 17. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn there. If not, this is going to be on the screen as well. It says this, one day, David's dad, Jesse, uh, said to David, I want you to take this basket of roasted grain and these 10 loaves of bread and carry them quickly to your brothers and give them these 10 cuts of cheese to their captain. See how your brothers are getting along and bring back a report on how they're doing. So this is a pretty simple mission. David's dad, Jesse, he says, hey, son, come in, you know, from from taking care of the sheep. And uh, I want you to do an Uber Eats delivery. And I want you to take this Domino's, right? Breadsticks included. Don't forget the marinara sauce. I want you to take this to your brothers. And I want you to check on them. Little did David know, this one act of obedience would put him on the world's greatest stage. Never underestimate the power of a small act of obedience to God. This small Decision. This small act of obedience uh, catapulted David into God's greatest purpose for his life. And we see what happens next in verse 19. And so David's brothers were with Saul and the Israelite army at the Valley of Elah, fighting against the Philistines. They're in a battle. So David left the sheep with another shepherd and set out early the next morning with the gifts Jesse had directed him. Again, here David is. He, 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 he's becoming king, but he starts out as a shepherd, and he's just being faithful. He's just being faithful. He's just following his dad's, his father's directions. And little did he know he would wind up exactly where God wanted him to, to be. So, so David delivers the dominoes. He takes the breadsticks uh, into his brothers. And look what happens next in verse 4. Then Goliath, a Philistine champion from Gath, came out of the Philistine ranks to face the forces of Israel. And he was over nine feet tall. Talk about a giant, right? Like you, you have this image on the screen. This, is, this, is, this could be David uh, next to Goliath, right? This is uh, David and Andre the Giant right, right there on the screen there <laughs> uh, that, um, that you're, you're seeing. And so what, what happens next? In verse 8, Goliath stood and shouted and taunted the Israelites. Why are you coming out to fight? I'm the Philistine champion, but you are, you are, you know, you're nothing. You're just servants of Saul. Choose one man to come down here and fight me. So instead of one army fighting against the other army, it's just mano y mano. We're going to settle this old school. Meet me out in the schoolyard. One man against one man. You send your best fighter. You, you send your champion and I will fight him here and now. 
And look how David responds in verse 26. Who is this pagan Philistine anyway? That he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God. And then he continues in verse 32. Don't worry about this Philistine. Don't worry about this giant, David says. I will go and fight him. David's like, put me in, coach. I'm ready. I'm ready. And, and he's like, I, I just want to, I would just want to get after this guy. Who is this guy who's, who's defying the army of the Lord? So, so it's important for us to know that David, at this moment, he is 15 years old. Now, I, I don't know what you were doing when you were 15 years old, but David is killing Giants. I just gave away the end of the story. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. David is killing giants, and he's 15 years old. Now, when I was 15 years old, I was getting arrested. Now, before you judge me on that, okay, let, let me just explain. Let me tell you this story. My friends and I, we came up with a brilliant plan that we were going to break into the vending machines at our middle school. And we were going to take all the change out of the vending machines and we were going to cash it in and we were going to retire early and we were going to sail off into, into the sunset. The fatal flaw in our plan. We did not know that there was a secret alarm on the front door of our, of our middle school that when we opened it, <laughs> It notified the police. So like as soon as we, you know, get into the school, like five minutes later, we're surrounded by the cops. Bad boys, bad boys. What you going to do? We were busted. We were going to jail, except for we were minors and we couldn't go to jail. And so when I was arrested, I was court ordered to go to a boarding school. Now, this was not an Ivy League boarding school. This was not a boarding school where you wear khakis and sweater vests. This was a boarding school for all the bad kids in South Carolina. That's where I was at. Well, at my time there at this boarding school, I came up with another brilliant idea. I had so many great ideas when I was 15. Uh, I was going to, I didn't like this boarding school. So I was going to run away from this boarding school. So, so, so I did. And I ran away and, and I hitchhiked to this bus station in the backwoods of South Carolina, and I'm literally standing in the middle of this bus station, in the middle of the night, in the backwoods of South Carolina, in a town that I didn't even know where I was. And I have this existential moment. And I begin asking myself, who have I become? How did I get here? I mean, I hitchhiked there. I knew that, but how did I Get here. Have you had those awakening moments in life? Isn't it strange? It's a part of the human nature that we can actually make decisions in life and we can chart paths in life and we can actually become someone that we never intended to be. We can actually become a person that we don't even like. And I was standing in the middle of that bus stop and I was thinking to myself, how did I get here? What, 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 what's going on? Who have I become? See, David was killing giants at 15. I was getting arrested at 15. But that's just how life works, isn't it? But did you know that David was not the first king of Israel? Saul was actually the first king of Israel. And what we're about to see is that Saul and David had two very different mindsets. Now, here's the important thing. Both Saul and David were chosen by God. Both Saul and David were picked by God to be the king of Israel. But both Saul and David wind up in very, very different places in life. Saul never fully reaches his full potential. And David's life just soars. It just takes off. What's the difference? Well, as we unpa un unpack uh, both of these mindsets and we just kind of compare them, 
Uh, uh, before we do that, I, I want to give you the main idea. Everyone is created equal. Not everyone starts out equally. Everyone is created equal. In the image of God, we are created. Not everyone starts out equally. And we're going to see the difference between David and Saul. It really was their mindset. David had a very, a very particular, a very specific mindset that just set him apart. And Saul, he never really f- reaches his full potential because he's trapped, not by the opportunities that God gave him, but he's trapped by his own mindset. So let's take a look at this. We get a clue of what went wrong in Saul's life in this next verse in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 22. And finally, Saul was chosen from among them. God picked him. God chose him to be king. But when they looked for him, he had disappeared. So they asked the Lord, where is he? And the Lord replied, he is hiding among the baggage. So they found him and brought him out and he stood head and shoulders above everyone else. God picks Saul to be king. And Saul hides in the luggage. God chooses Saul. And Saul is hiding in the coat closet. No one can find him. What's going on here? Saul has this insecurity mindset that, that's leading him, that's, that's guiding him. He's, he's, he's afraid, right? He's picked by God and yet he wants to hide. We get another clue to what went wrong with, with Saul in verse uh, chapter 13 and verse 7. As for Saul, he was still in Gilgal and he had waited seven days according to the time set by Samuel. So Saul is waiting for the prophet Samuel. Now in this verse, Samuel represents the Lord. So really, Saul is waiting on the Lord. He's waiting on God. How many of you know there's a timing that God has for our lives? When he brings certain things into our life, relationships, provision, all of those things. Saul is in that place where he's waiting on the Lord and he gets impatient because how many of you know that God's timing isn't really our timing? We, we, we tend to go a little faster uh, a lot of times than, than God is moving. And so he's waiting on Samuel, but Samuel did not show up. And the people became scattered. The people became fearful. And so uh, we, we see what happens next in verse 9. So Saul said, bring a burnt offering and a peace offering here to me. And he offered The offerings, he was not supposed to do this. What is he he doing? He's getting ahead of God. He's not waiting on the Lord. He is taking things into his own hands. And look what Samuel says. Uh, So Samuel came. And when he came, he went out to meet Saul. And Samuel said, what have you done? What's going on with Saul? He's insecure. Right, he's got this insecurity mindset, and he, now he's self-reliant. He's overconfident. He's like, bring me those offerings. I'm, not wait- I'm, I'm taking things into my own hands. I'm going to make something happen in my own effort. Look at Proverbs 3 and verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. Did you know that there's, there's times in our lives that God's ways are not our ways. We, we, we see things falling apart and God's like, no, actually things are falling together. <laughs> right? And you have to wait on the Lord. But Saul gets ahead of God. He grows impatient and he becomes self-reliant, overconfident, and it leads to his demise. We get another clue, though, in 1 Samuel 18 and verse 8. Um, this is what... It says, they sang it and danced uh, for joy. They sang and danced for joy with tambourines and cymbals. This was their song. Saul has killed his thousands and David his ten thousands. This made Saul very angry. What's this, he said. They credit David with ten thousands and me with only thousands? Next they'll be making him their king. That's exactly what's going to happen. 
he ultimately, uh, so from that time on, Saul kept a jealous eye on David. So, so Saul has this insecurity mindset. He's got this self-reliant, overconfident mindset. And now he has this jealousy mindset. And we know it's jealousy because it leads to comparison. And he's comparing himself to David. L- listen, everyone is created equal, but not everyone starts out equally. David was killing giants at 15. And Saul, for whatever reason, he, he, he's starting a little bit further back. But you see, society and culture, they have these benchmarks, don't they? For our lives. Like, you have to be married at this age. You have to make this amount of money at this age. Like, like time is running out. You may have missed your window, right? And then that quickly can become to who has the best job and who has the best spouse and who has the best income, right? I mean, in the church world, I mean, I, I'm a pastor, right? But, but it still exists there. In, 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 in my world, it's like, you know, how many campuses do you have? I was just at a gathering, a pastor's gathering recently, and they asked that question. How many campuses do you have? And, and I was like, D- I don't know. Does one count? I, I don't know. <laughs> like, like, and, and, then, and then it's like, how big is your outreach budget? It's like, you know, and, and like social media, it's like, how many followers do you have? Like, like, for me, it's like, I have friends that, that started their church when they were 30. I had to wait till I was 40. Everyone's created equal. But not everyone starts out equally. And David, David had a different mindset. He had a different mindset that catapulted him in to God's purpose for his life. And I want to unpack David's mindset as we close with three words. Know, like, and be. Know, like, and be. You see, it begins, David's mindset, that really was everything um, to what God was doing in his life. It uh, It starts with knowing myself. I have to know myself. And, and we see how this took place in David's life in this next verse, in 1 Samuel 17, in verse 28. But when David's oldest brother, so, so let me set this up. David delivers the Domino's pizzas to, to his brothers, okay? And, and he checks on them just like his dad requested. And now he sees Goliath coming and, and he's inquiring about the whole situation. He's trying to get more information. What's going on? And so as he's doing that, his brother says this. Uh, Eliab heard David talking to the men, and he was angry. What are you doing around here anyway, he demanded. What about those few sheep? It's not even a lot of sheep that you take care of. It's just a few sheep for dad that you're taking care of. You need to go back and do that. Well, let me just tell you, as a 15-year-old kid, if my older brother said that to me, let me just tell you, it would, it would discourage me. It would deter me. Maybe it would do that for you, but not David. It does not deter him. In fact, the king, the head guy in charge, the president, the prime minister, look what he says. Don't be ridiculous, David. There's no way you can fight this Philistine. There's no way you can fight Goliath. Here we are talking about this story, uh, you know, millennia uh, after it happened. There's no way you can do it. But what what does David know? He knows something about himself that other people do not know. And he goes on to explain himself. He says, look, there was a time when I was watching my father's sheep (laughs) and I was taking care of the sheep and and there was a lion that came out to try to snatch one of my father's sheep. And when that lion came after my dad's sheep, I killed that lion. And that's not all. Another time, there was a bear that came after my dad's sheep. And when that bear came after my dad's sheep, I killed that bear. I've killed a lion and I've killed a bear. What is David explaining? 
He's like, bro, I know myself. I know my strengths. I know my abilities. I know what I'm capable of, and I know my God and what opportunities he's presenting to me. You see, what he's saying to us is if we're going to have this mindset and our lives are going to soar, I have to know myself. I want to give you a practical next step on this. All right, I want you to go to reve.church, go to our website, and I want you to take the assessments there. Okay, so there's an Enneagram assessment. There's a personality test to see if you have multiple personalities. There's a spiritual gift test. There's a strengths test. I want you to take those assessments and you are going to be well on your way to knowing yourself. This is where it all begins for David, but it doesn't stop there. The next mindset that he has is, I have to, I have to like Myself. David, he really liked himself. And we know that because of this next verse in Psalm 139. Look what David writes about himself. I praise you, Lord, because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. David is echoing Ephesians 2.10 that you are God's masterpiece. That word masterpiece is derived from the original word that means poem. You are God's poem. You are God's work of art. Listen, we don't talk about this enough. Right? Like when you go to work tomorrow morning, you need to send an all staff email and you need to let everybody know. Listen, guys, hey, I want you to let, I want you to know. I am God's masterpiece. I am a work of art. You see, it begins with knowing yourself, but then it, it continues to, to liking yourself. I've got to know myself. I've got to like myself. And when I do that, I begin to have this, it shapes my mindset. And it catapults me into the purposes of God. Here's a practical next, next step. I want you to take you, I want you to uh, go further with this, okay? This week, I want you to ask a mentor, friend, or family member. Ask a neighbor. I don't know. Ask your dog, okay? Ask them this question. What do you think I have an unfair advantage of doing? Ask them that question. What do you think? Get some feedback. What do you think I have an unfair advantage at doing? Take some time. Think about it. Process it. Here's the third. You got to know yourself. You got to like yourself. And ultimately, you have to be yourself. This is David's mindset. He knows himself. He likes himself. And at the end of the day, he's just going to be himself. Look at this next verse in verse 38. Then Saul gave David his, his own armor. So Saul gives David his armor. Now Saul's a big dude. David's kind of a smaller guy. But he gives him his armor because he's going up to fight against Goliath. And David puts on the armor and, and, and he strapped the sword over it. And, and he took a step or two to see what it was like for he had never worn such things before. And look what he says. I can't go in these. I can't wear this armor. It's not me. It's just not me. I can't fight. The, his mobility, his agility, it was all, you know, limited with that armor. He knew himself so much. He liked himself. At the end of the day, David's just going to be himself. And this mindset is going to catapult David onto the world's greatest stage, directly into the will of God and the purpose that God has for his life. Well, what is David doing? He, he, he's constantly, he's like, I'm, I gotta know myself. I, I gotta like myself. I gotta be myself. I gotta know myself. I gotta like myself. And I'm just gonna be myself. And as David does this, he, it, it changes everything. Let me ask you, which one of these do you need, need to work more on? Maybe take this week, this month, to focus on one of these. Maybe take that assessment 
answer that question and take your next step in one of these. David knew himself, he liked himself, and at the end of the day, he just wanted to be himself. And that changed everything for him and it can change everything for you. Hey, let me pray for us as we close. God, thank you so much for this moment. God, I pray that you would give us the power, by the power of your Holy Spirit, to live the lives that you've created us to live, to have a new mindset, a David type of mindset, to know ourself, to like ourself, and just to be ourself. God, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.